Hello everyone, this is Corin and today I will be talking about positioning and this match is me and Im Implacable. I'm currently grinding this line which is quite a frustrating line to grind. So here you go. Um, currently I, my whole, well all the things I've upgraded are my rockets and my bombers. My torpedo bombers are not upgraded, my hull is not upgraded as well. And I'm just a poor guy, so... Um, anyways, starting on the map, um, I believe... I, anyways, I forgot what it was. Anyways, um, it's an epic center match and a snowstorm in the middle. I remember that in snowstorms, your surface detection would be uh, like lowered about 10 to 20 percent. Forgot how much. Um, anyways, right here, I was trying to, like, I've already got myself a game plan on the way. I was actually doing uh, some autopilot maneuvering by, um, by, like, getting myself behind this island. Alright, well, I'll pause the replay right here, and I'll show you how to do it. Alright, so back in this um, planning tool that I got, from my plan a while ago. Um, so I was starting from right here and oh, hello there. And I wanted to get behind this island. So the thing was deciding which way I wanted to position my, uh, my carrier, like whether I wanted to face this side or that side, like, like um, pointing in or out of the island. And judging by the fact that their team might be pushing this way. Uh, oh, I don't have to. Oh god, this is quite difficult to use for me. Um, anyways, I would prefer to point my ship, like, to get ass in on this island. So I wanted to. The idea here was to. All right, get off. All right. So the idea was to do a turn here, and then slide myself in behind this island without the pilot and it's actually um it took me a while so you could see me spending so much time on positioning myself and then finally i finished and i'll share with you some like um some ideas and maybe i think it's a tip about how to get yourself into a position without being spotted by plane and basically it's just about placing fighters in your air spotting range like you you can see as on on the mini map i have my air spotting range um, and oh, I, got, I got jumped off by a photon anyways i had to get myself out of here and just like last time oh wait last time oh no it was a it was a record of another epic center match I was doing, but um, I better talk about this. The um over here you can see that their team, like back when I was talking about some shit, um, their team's outer outer circle was running until it suddenly stopped because my team engaged uh walked into the outer circle, the outer loop maybe, and then. Maybe I would wait for a bit more, and then it suddenly dropped to like oh my god, from like from like three fourths to two thirds, maybe a half, and that that meant that their one DD I'm not sure which walked into the middle loop, and I wanted to intercept it or well since it already I already know where it was where it would be. Then I would like to try to find it and rocket it. Since it's the easiest DD to find in an epic center range. Right here I was looking around, I was wondering why I didn't spot it until I realized that their Chengmu, hello, has already slipped into like this far this far into the map. So rocket once. And got a lucky fire. Shima went into the center, and right here I'm not really um, 
following up in rocket attack run because um actually i should have um, been attacking the chamu continuously but i was considering my own position so i wanted to make sure if there was anything that was going to spot me if i went further and like my detection wing or range would go onto the d-line and i wanted to make sure that nothing was going to spot me Currently, the Shokaku has my CD spotted. Maybe their Yamatos have already been aiming their guns at me. So I really needed to like look at the valves more. Like, if I go further on like this, I would get spotted. So I had to drop fighters right here, to right where my uh, CD's air detection is, so that Shokaku would evade this part, maybe turn around or go somewhere else. So, like, it's just like a repeller. And then I would try bomb this Baltimore since I've, I've already put this far from my CV. Um, I predicted the belt to turn um, counterclockwise out bow on to this island, but it just stayed right here. So it was a little um, mistake. He predicted my predict, so I got a not a bad drop. It was. Um, 6k and 2 fires, but it DCP'd right away. So right here, I was starting to get into my position, the most dangerous position maybe in the map to just um, get behind this island. I wanted to take the cap, I mean I wanted to step on the cap and also um, be as close as possible to the battlefield. So the Shokaku was flying planes over here and that's when my fighters just um, kind of like make it go away, even though I know it was striking the turf, it's right in front of it. Um, oh, why, why did it turn around again? I don't know. Fighters, stuff. Um, Alright, so here I was going for their Chomu. I know that their Chomu is in mid. Uh, uh, well, it was like right here, like the um, time or uh, the timer of the points was, was, was not running. And suddenly it turned out that it went back the whole way. Alright, maybe I'm wrong because there must be another DD that just exited. Anyways, uh, this Chamu fortunately had its A on, so I rocketed once, which was not really a lucky drop, just two penetrations. The second one, follow up. So now I'm behind this island. I there's just one more thing to uh, be, be careful of. Like, look at right here. Uh, look right here. Um, as you can see, there is a Yamato on the other side of the map, and this island. I'm not sure if it can block myself Yamato shells, and this is a very painful thing about autopilot. And it is that autopilot, um, like makes you social distance with islands even though that you are meaning to crash into that island so i actually have to uh, manual maneuver my own cv later or actually right now but I, I do it later so that you prevent cross shots from either behind me like from this angle so that their Yamato might sail out there and just flap me like flap maybe just kill me dead strike me or this Yamato over here at about um c5 so that it doesn't arc me as well i just have to be really careful when i camp islands like this because i've been blocked too many times and i hope that everyone um keeps it in mind that the autopilot um positioning behind islands doesn't uh, don't make you safe so you have to manually position yourself I just saw their Shoka dive bomb RDDs, and that is quite questioning, to be honest. Oh, and I spotted two DDs in the middle. They're both tier 8. A Z26 and a Kagero. Um, the Kagero didn't smoke, so I went for it right away. Nice broadside you got there. And also, I think he is a Stockholm without um, <laughs> survivability expert. Quite funny. <laughs> Poor guy. 
Anyways, I got him. I got a rocket salvo on him, and we lost two ships right away. Even though we traded their chum. Uh, so here our Xinyang. Excuse me. I don't know how he got here, but he's apparently flanking the enemy team. There are no ships out here, and only the Shima. So I pinged the Xinyang that, hey, you know, I'm gonna rocket this guy. I'm gonna rocket the Shima. Um. The attack run right here I started was completely um, predicting where their Shima is. So when I uh, come on controls, all right. So when I started this attack run, I was expecting the Shima to appear somewhere in front of me, and it did. So I could just do it the attack right away and go and get. Even though if I did not, if even though if I failed to um, predict the Shima's position. I can still start another one, and it's it's just about trying, <laughs> kind of like that. And right here, I was starting to change my uh, like position my ship manually instead of uh, trusting autopilot. And then I decided, frick it, I'm just gonna go full right rudder and um, four Ws to the end to just make myself beach on the island and. And that way I can get myself closest to the island and I guess it would prevent me from taking 460 shells. So right here, I was not sure whether I should attack the Minotaur or the, um, or the Baltimore since both EVs in the middle have already sparked up. Um, by the way, as you can see right here, I, uh, I just rammed the island. So pretty much I'm in a safe position to tell about Hello, Minotaur. So, you know, I believe that he just ran out of the smoke, and I was calling my team, like, well, started to call my team right away to start dumping on this Mino. Just rush right into the crossfire of three DDs, and maybe not DDs, DDs don't shoot at Minotaur. Uh, anyways, I would go after this Minotaur. Try to do a drop on him, even though Mino had pretty good AA. Uh, but I, I would actually like it to be dead. Rock Magic boost here. Um, well, it's kind of a difficult thing to dodge like, nowadays. I actually have no idea how I pass through those flak. Uh, right, anyways, I did a drop. Nice Citadel from maybe our Yamato. And here. I was doing a chain drop. Just, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, very, um, very noisy Yamato there. Um, stuck a flood on Yamato. Then they repair right away. All right. Uh, <laughs> our Kagero ate a torp. I was going to. Um, bomb run on this Baltimore because it was spotted, stuck crowded. Maybe my team could punish it. And another thing is that I am currently running out of reserves. I've dumped my planes into Minotauri and it is not a fair trade since the Mino got into smoke again and it's quite terrible. Like I only have seven torque planes left and actually about um, five bombers at the seven and a half minute mark and that's not well I mean it's something that happens in in um, high tiers maybe as Saipan I just get myself uh, last time I got myself to play in a midway as a uh, well, playing against a bunch of American AA it, it happens so actually I prefer to end matches like high tier matches as soon as possible because um, Saipan and Implacable um, reserves are pretty, well, regen is pretty terrible. Right here, I wanted to let you know that, um, alright, so I wanted to go for the Z23 here since it was blocking my Z46 from pushing. Our Shenyang is over here, uh, <laughs> hello, and the Z23 23 smoked up, so I decided to do a free drop here and go for the bounce. And then I was quite dumb. 
for not going after it directly, but actually making a big turn here. And then I rocketed the rope. And it was a big and you get nothing from it. Lost all my plane there. Six stun pen is very balanced. I mean yeah, what, what would I expect on this thing? Here my Lenin was getting bombed and I wanted to drop fighters but I thought Alright, maybe I can just turn that in. Like it's just right above me. Anyways, my team somehow managed to kill their Z23, but Nino is still in mid. Their entire team is clumped up. I just hate I just hate uh, this kind of lineup. Like it's, they're just clumped up, they're not even well spread. The full detail on their four DDs are picked off because they were in the middle. Or maybe one was over here or something. But that pretty much ensures our team's uh, um, cap control and stuff because big ships are slow. And <laughs> actually, I'm out of bombers, hello. Um, so at this point, I could start, uh, I could make sure, I'm pretty sure that I can start with bombers. So, wait, what is it? Wait a second. So, CV is all up to, to you. I have no idea what he's talking about. Anyways, I'm gonna um, start the bombers from that way. Like, then, see if I'm lucky. Uh, yeah? Not bad. 8k, yeah. Oh, 8k, yeah. 8k with the fire. And he actually did not CP it, but I'm gonna torpedo it anyways. Um, even. Well, that's the closest thing that I could strike, and there's a Montana right next to it. So the thing right here was to start the attack from the lead. Um, so to not take the uh, uh, real my angle, anyways, I would do typical Terran book. I might have started the lead. Alright, well, they hit. And then do another one. And as you just saw, as uh, you just saw, I, <laughs> I contrib uh, I contributed in capturing the outer circle. So my team actually held the outer circle. Um, we have, we have all three right now, but at least I helped. Um, I just um did another drop. Oh, good shot from the Marlenin. I just slang off the last um, torpedo squadron because I didn't want to go for another strike on the Montana that would um, just wipe out all my reserves. So I went, alright, time to <laughs> get my planes black, uh, get my planes back up black. Right here, I could have struck the Vlad, but. I don't know, I'm not really sure about which ship has what armor, so I thought he had armor, so I struck it. Right here, I was full broadside to the Montana. I really should have reversed out from behind this island. I kind of panicked, and <laughs> right now it's just um, wishing my propulsion to take me forward, or I get on, or I stay unwanted. Thankfully, to this island on G8, I believe. Yep. So here I'm gonna torpedo this Vlad. Hello Vlad. And this is what you can do with uh, Royal Navy torpedo bombers. So if I was a Saipan, I had to turn all the way around into this Montana AA and then strike the Vlad vertical. And that is just impossible for Saipan or Lexington to do if I only had like one attack run and like one to two more. Runs. It's just not what. <laughs> it's just not not possible. Especially FPR. I mean, FPR can do Royal Navy turn with a torch, and it is just very very balanced, <laughs> according to War Gaming. Um, right here, the Vlad, um, their belt. Well, a lot of ships are almost dead. So 
I'm just gonna do a quick rocket run maybe. Uh maybe not. <laughs> do a torque run uh on it. I'm glad it says finish me, I want to die. I'm like okay. And right here we pretty much won the match. Um because my team has done a really nice job at um, attacking enemy ships and I somehow got 106k spawning damage in um, my few team. Goodbye, belt. I dropped fighters right here, I think. This bot is Montana. Yep, there you go. And then I'm gonna attack this Yamato since it's, it's the only thing left I can actually attack. Uh, Alright, so I'm gonna strike this from out of here. Max one, and I don't know. I think I did a pretty much uh, good job in <laughs> goodbye Lenny. <laughs> did a great job. Um, I think I did impressive, an impressive job um, on positioning myself behind this island to get some spotting and also strike faster and stop them from pushing if I could. And I caught my Lenin because he actually did a pretty nice job at stopping a Roma and a Montana. That would actually just be my death sentence. So the match ended right here and I'm gonna take you into my second match when I played Saipan. Uh, again, <laughs> I have quite a lot of Saipan replays but alright I'll switch over to it. Um, so now, back in my uh, typical lovely Saipan, um, I just ask, may I carry? Uh, well, it's something I ask my teammates when I play Saipan. Um, like, like, I have stats to grind, and I like playing this ship, so I hope that I'm good at this ship. Um, okay, starting in the match. I am going to drop fighters for our Australian. Try, I'll try to pick off some DDs, maybe if I can, and then strike a few uh, DDs if possible. I was trying to position myself. I'm not sure how the enemies are distributed, but I can tell that the A flank is just so weak. Look at our Fiji <laughs> Nay. <laughs> I definitely would uh, go spot over there to check whether it is a strikeable flank. Like, um, the idea was, uh, the reactions I would do here was like this. Um, I spot A, I would spot A for my team first. If no ships are going there, uh, if no ships on their, on the enemy team are going there, then I would push A to ensure that the cap is ours. <laughs> if not, then I would try to find a ship that is, uh, rather weak, uh, or isolated, or overextending, or uh, anyways just uh, spotting is everything to get all the game until I could possibly get and then strike that ship in a desirable angle. And in terms of positioning, I was moving myself to the A, a uh, cap <laughs> because I thought, <clears throat> alright, there's a Nagara moving there, there's a surface there, there's a line there. Oh no! <laughs> That's a lot of ships, and the Alexi can also spawn here, so it's likely going to be their pushing flank. Right here, I underestimated Lion's A, and only ended up in by losing all four planes in the strike. Got 2k damage. Well. <laughs> Not exactly the smartest idea to strike a, uh, to strike a lion, uh, which hasn't been washed by HE shells and stuff. But right here, I noticed that there's something happening on the map already in like one and a half minute in the match. Our La Fantasque and their Mogador has started a gunfight, which is favored in the Mogador side because it is much closer to their. Uh, to the enemy team. And I thought, oh shit, no, <laughs> because look at our the Fantasque, look at his AP. I should have helped him, but I thought he might have been dead if he lost that gunfight, or he might have just disengaged. So I thought maybe I shouldn't help that 
the Fantasque and help help um the egg blank instead. So right here the turpid was sailing confidently into A. Now it's going to strike it once. There's a Cleveland behind it. And this Cleveland is really annoying to be honest in this match. It's behind this turpid, I can't strike it. No BB will kill it. Um because there's a turpid in front of it, they will shoot at the turpid. And that means my plane will have to endure Cleveland AA as I strike this turpid, even though it is overextending, uh, which is painful. Uh, luckily, our Nagato picked off their York. Very nice job. The turpid, who was uh, stuck with two fires earlier, DCP'd right away. So I tried to follow up with the rocket attack. And then I stack a fire. Uh, well, luckily, I did. Also got an A mount off this turpid. Um, pretty nice. And then I rotated to my uh, torpedo bombers. Right here, you can uh, <laughs> have a glimpse of how balanced AA is in the current state. So right here, I see a turpid broadside. I fly over to it. And then I turn in, start to engage. I might have made a mistake here. I took it to Cleveland. Alright, this A, right? This black A. I dive to dodge. Fucked my heal a bit too early, but that should be fine. Look at this DMA. Boom! Then. <laughs> Even though I managed to get my drop off, they capped A still, but I lost all of my 6 torpedo bombers. And I used my heal. Well, I mean, heal doesn't make, doesn't ensure your squad to be safe, but still, my squad is wiped out. I only <laughs> this turpid is barely dead, and I did a terrible. Did just didn't do well on striking this turpid earlier. But I'll try to follow up with a bomb and make sure that this turpid can't stand, uh, can't stay afloat. There you go. Right here, I really wish this Cleveland made a mistake and rushed out to fight this grenade because its AA is really good. <laughs> and my positioning, since this video was based about positioning, uh, over here I tried to move towards A to focus on this turpid and take this turpid out because. After taking out the turpids, what there would be left is a lion and a nagato, which is also, well, there are still BBs, but they can't push as well as the turpids can. And after I uh, took out their turpids, I didn't seal further into a cap because, like, look, there's an algae here, there's a Cleveland that might come out, and I might get crossfire. I might end up in crossfire. So I turned away from the a cap, and maybe, um, find myself an island safe to camp on. Right here, I was going for this Mogador. Hello, Mogador. So, I wanted to take out this Mogador. Not a uh, no specific reason, but it was just a desirable target. And it was also getting taken down by my team, so I thought, alright, maybe I should have to kill them over the door. French saturation. <laughs> I really, really need French saturation as well. I'm lucky with this penetration and picked up this Mogador. So, right now, our team is behind because we lost. I mean, we don't have three cap we don't have any of the three caps, and we need to cap. <laughs> like, honestly, we just need to cap. So I pinged, alright guys, time to get into the cap. The Mogador is dead. The Atlanta has radar, but you can spot it, you can outspot it, and it's not a stealth radar. So here, honestly, I should have gone to bomb this Atlanta instead of flying my planes to a, a cap, which is not 
exactly and reasonable. But right now I think maybe I should have helped this dead man somehow and assisting it with fighters. Um, even though it is dead already, it sealed out behind that island and it instantly got crossfired by a CV and also uh, two BBs and a Cleveland. Maybe they're all drinking as well. Um, right here, I spotted their kid and originally I was going to sail into B Cap because there was nothing around. But after I spotted this kid, I moved my ship. Like, did an instant turn. I had to um, do some adjustments, uh, adjustments to my positioning to get behind this island at E7. That would actually be the most desirable position for my CV. I could go for a flank here, their a flank strike. Um, well, anyways, it's pretty much the middle, in the middle of the map. I can go fly my planes at a really close distance from my targets. So here, I spot this Algeri. Um, a bit isolated. I should have gone to bomb here, but maybe it would just smoke up and. I'll just go for the Algeria instead. I make a slight slow, a slow turn and the on the uh, Anyways, uh, right. Slippery. I <laughs> got a nun pin on the Algeria, alright. Very balanced. Fun and engaging, my guy. <laughs> From here, I was trying to well zone this kid out because if I believe that it was to go my pet is very nice. <laughs> How? Thanks, Lex. Oh, and honestly, I could have rocketed the Audrey as well, but I recalled my planes. Because I panicked. <laughs> I did not want um, to take further damage. I kind of turned away from incoming shells if there were. That was close. Um, right here, my team has actually wiped out their entire sea flank. Well done, team. Did a great. Uh, did a great job. We're taking C, also pushing into B, even though we're behind in points. But I'm confident my team can eventually push back. So right here, I wanted to go for their Nagato, or or Lion, because it, they're pushing our PG. I hope that I can help the PG out. Um, and hello, kid. Nice AA. Tried to dock with the black and there you go. You see, <laughs> you see the Cleveland behind the Nagato and it has BFAA. And this is the second time I made a mistake in this game. simply because I did not respect Cleveland. I did not respect Cleveland AA and I ran right into BFAA. Ooh, to my plane. And also, this Nagato wasn't was still maneuvering against my plane. I caught myself in Cleveland BFA, Line A as well, and I had to get my plane out of there. Uh, it was not worth, not worth the drop at all. I lost four more planes again. I am only left with three planes, uh, three torpedo bombers, and I only land four torps, <laughs> and that's not what you would like to have in a side gun match. Uh, so it was a mistake I made, and I did it, which is also why I could not get a lot of damage in the match. Anyway, here I see a 3k Nagato, I was like, KS tied my guy? Hello there! So I dropped my last engine boost to kill this Nagato if I could, aim for her upper belt, and whacked her out of whacked her back to port, even though my squad... <laughs> Got wiped out again, and that was my only rocket plane left. Right here, I actually have eight bombers right here. Um, 
I got fighters to support our fantastic dude. I wanted to make sure where the kid was. Hello, kid. Uh, oh, bye, kid. Um, right here, I was. I obviously I could go for the to strike the kid and then turn around and strike the Cleveland as well. But I thought, well, I got a bit stingy with my planes and I went for the Algeri at the bottom of the map. Hello. It actually didn't fire guns for a while, and I thought I have the time to uh, strike you. Hello, there. Don't stop yet. Oh, look at that tier blade. Well, it got kind of lucky. I should have started a second attack run because the Algeri had her, um, like, look at her fighters. She used her fighters a bit too late. That I could strike, uh, that I could do a second strike on. But I recall that fight. <sighs> Welp. So here I start my rocket, my final two rocket planes. Actually, I wanted to attack these fighters so that. Um, Alright, so here's a, uh, uh, two things to talk about. First thing is, I wanted to get the uh, fighter planes away so that my team could stay unspotted as they uh, if they possibly show their broadside and the second thing is I wanted to show you how I get rid of fighters without losing planes so um, even even though that it's <laughs> I only had one attack run in my squad but it's just like having your squad take damage and then Using your armaments so that the planes stop attacking the uh, stop attacking the rockets. Like, look at them, and then they think that oh, I have just done uh, like I just finished attacking because the planes that I were attacking have dropped their armaments. So I'll just be small. Guess I'll die. <laughs> so that's how fighters work. If you want to like despawn them or attack them, and you don't want to lose any planes. Um, right here, I know the match was won, even though we were behind in points. Our entire team was pushing, um, so I started to play uh, the farming simulator way. <laughs> I, I do um, ha am a bit low in damage, so I st uh, started to get myself some damage. I currently have a third hundred and thirty k average. I better start farming, even though there is a kid out here spotting me. Well. <laughs> So here, this is my last heal. I'm out of the bombers, unfortunately. Um, I dropped my heal as usual. I left, dropped my armaments, and. <laughs> which is my actually accurate rack of Hello Cleveland. <laughs> um, anyways, I dropped on their lion, uh, which DCP right after I. Stuck a foot on it. I should have been going after the kid, but since the lion used her DCP, I should go for the lion for damage. Damage, damage. <laughs> what a freak. Like, look at their Lexington. Full squad of dive bombers, and right now, look at my reserve. Zero, oh, well, actually, three, um, two, and seven, or something. <laughs> Like that—that's what happens to Saipan when you, uh, when if I play terribly. So I have to make sure that I get uh, careful with my reserves, or okay, this is a perm fire, or that I just try to take down their enemy team before I run out of plane. Which is what? Oh, I actually have nine bombs. In this. Which is how I've been playing this match, as you can see. I'm gonna sk skip a little bit here because we're winning, and I'm spot. I've been spotted by the kid for a while, um, and and then I uh, run to the spiders, and then I realize that I'm getting torn. Because apparently, uh, no, 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 all right, you know I'm dead. Sorry. 
because apparently the Miyoko that brought Hydro, I thought it would sail in front of me and spot the Torps, but no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Maybe they're not gonna spot it, but I was getting it. So here I wanted to kill the lion. <laughs> I got myself torped like how Little Town uh no yeah how Little Town got sunk. Got a bit lucky on my last drop. The final bomb did not penetrate anything but the water surface. Um, and that's the end of my video. Um, I knew it. <laughs> I knew what was going to happen to my ship because the kid was going to felt me. I know, like, I expected it to happen. I just didn't. Well. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I got a bit cocky with my positioning. But my team wasn't in, so I'm happy with it. Um, I sped up on the end of the, of the match because nothing was really special. I hope you guys enjoyed my match is of showing you how to position how to position in terms of striking targets. Um, I'm gonna do a surface ship montage as my next video but I have uh, an exam soon. I am really starving right now. I I want to eat something. <laughs> And thanks for watching guys, I hope you guys enjoyed and learned something from my match, even though if you didn't, um, uh, please let me know if you wanted to learn anything else or something that I needed to improve in my matches, just feel free to let me know, since I am not the best player out there, I want to improve, and yep, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you guys next time.